Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast? Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. And now, another post from Aunt Nora. I've signed up for the Living Nativity scene on Tuesdays and Thursdays from <laughs> 7 to 8 p.m. until Christmas. I have to be a sheep tomorrow night. I made the joke that I better not shave. Lisa commented, I thought it was funny. Molly says, it's shearing. That was another post from Cat's Aunt Nora. It's time for Radio Rock, Paper, Scissors. How's Anthony feeling today? Pretty good. Good, man. What are you up to? Um, just, uh, drop my son off at daycare. Okay. And you're just kind of waiting out the fact that you can tr- score tremendous prizes right now because we're at the end of the year and we got to get rid of all of this. Is that the deal? Exactly. Good. I like the way you're thinking. So, Anthony, we've all played rock, paper, scissors. It's a very simple game. Uh, Kat is the reigning radio rock, paper, scissors world champion. For you to dethrone her, you must win two out of three of the rounds. And it's going to go simple. I will say one, two, three, shoot. And then you throw down rock, paper, or scissors. You beat Kat two out of three, and you are a huge, huge winner. Are you prepared? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, my God. Who is that? They sound so cute. <laughs> That's my boy. Yeah. How old is he? Uh, 16 months. And, uh, and how long will you go before you stop referring to it in months and you'll just get to years? Is that two? Is that He's when you start doing that? 900 months. He's in- <laughs> two, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got to say, man, I've never heard a dude do that. I think that's a chick thing. She's My like, cousin used to do that 27 months. Yes. Wait, what? They're two and a half? He's 31 months today. <laughs> and, and you know how they're like, and he loves soft food and he loves... <laughs> This is his favorite book. I'm like, Crystal. So your 16 month old, the name of your young man is what? Is uh, It's Anthony also. Oh, oh, you're one of those kind of guys. Is All he a right. junior and or a. This is an Anthony also. Oh, man. So yeah. many Tonys. So there's so many generations of disappointment here if you don't win, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to hold up the family name. Simple enough. Round one, Tony, Anthony, sorry. Here we go. In one, two, three, shoot. Rock. Rock. Okay, that's a draw. Uh, let's do round two. One, two, three, shoot. Paper. Rock. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, Tony, I think I think you and myself and little Tony back there, uh, we got to have a talk here. So the advantage you have of kind of being on the radio here is that there's a small delay in your cell phone you can take advantage of. So if you just let Kat say what she has first and then you follow up with a winning rock, paper, or scissors, there's a pretty good chance you might be able to win this game. <laughs> Sounds good. It's not really cheating if you believe you're playing right, okay? Let's set, it, let's set an example for little Anthony back there, and let's pull it together, and let's win here. All right, here we so go. Round number two. <laughs> Cat's up one to nothing. Cat, this is FTW for the win. One, two, three, shoot! Scissors. Scissors. <laughs> Anthony! All right, um... Anthony. I knew he whispered something to you. I feel like I feel like we need to have another talk here. If you just take a deep breath, you'll hear what she puts down, and then you can battle back with the adjacent rock, paper, or scissors to win. So just okay. wait. Am I getting through to you? I feel like I'm really not. Okay, here we go. All right, round two for the win, Cat. One, two, three, shoot. Paper. <laughs> Scissors. Oh, there it is. Yes, yes, it's tied up. One to one. Good job, Anthony. <laughs> Little Tony in the back seat. No, I can no, hear him okay, celebrating. Okay. He's <laughs> representing. He might fa- save the family name. This one for the win. For the championship of the world. One, two, three, shoot. Rock. Oh, I didn't even hear it. It's, uh, Rock. Rock. Paper. <laughs> I just... I got to let you get on with your day. So, yes, you won. Hold on. You got a shirt. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Everybody! Uh, OPP is other people's problems for some reason, and it might just be because it's the silly season. We've been getting more and more people that will hit, hit us up with a DM or a text saying, hey, this is going on in my life. Can you throw this out to your listeners? I love that. Everybody has issues in their life. Even if you feel like it might be minor, somebody else might be going through it, and that's where I think we can call this therapy because everybody might have a really good route for you to go to better your life. When you broadcast to the masses, there's a great chance, like you said, that somebody else has gone through this and might have some good, Mm -hmm. you know, advice for you. 
So, Rachel, can you give us exactly what's going on? And give us the details, too, please. My mother has invited my ex to our Christmas Eve family dinner. Okay. Um, and they are neighbors, and I have known him my whole life. Okay. But my mother does not know why we broke up. Yeah, why is he your ex? And That's I what I wanted to ask right off the bat. Like, I understand. I don't want to have, uh, you know, Christmas dinner with my ex either. But, like, why, why, why is he your ex? Why aren't you together? We were actually engaged. Hey. And he cheated on me. Okay, I get it. That's awful. With, with a guy. Oh, there's some next and level stuff. All right. Did you, you caught him? Yeah. It, oh I came God. home and found them together in our bed. Girl. <sighs> No way. Because my mom obviously doesn't know that this is why you're not together anymore. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I have not told a lot of people. My sister knows, and that's why she called me and yeah. said, hey, do you know what mom just did? Oh, my God. What do you think your mom so, would do if she did know that? I don't know, because I think to her, she still thinks he's like family, you know? Yeah. But um, I don't know. I just, I, I really don't feel comfortable, and I don't know if I should tell her. I don't want to you know, out him out to everybody, but I just really don't know what to do. I but like- I don't know what's worse. Is it worse to find him with a guy or with a girl? I guess we're just as long as it's not you. I don't think there's a difference, but I, I feel like there's got to be a way around. Like you don't want to ruin mom's view of this guy if you don't have to. So there's probably a way around this. But I mean, if you, if he did that kind of stuff to you, then don't you think mom would probably write him off? If she knew about it, I think she would. But on the other hand, you know, they live close to together. And yeah, I know she's like really values that relationship. So I just don't know. I'm, I'm lost. I need some advice. Okay. Let's recap real quick. Got a call from Rachel and actually we first got a DM and she said, hey, I got this going on. Can we make it part of your OPP? And bottom line is she always has this uh, this Christmas dinner with mom and dad. Her ex fiance still lives next ex-boyfriend. door. Or boy, well, be yeah. a boyfriend lives next door to mom and dad. Still, she's known him her whole life, and she caught him in bed with another guy. They were dating for what'd she say, like four years? Yeah, it's four years. And the only other person that knows is her sister. So the mom just told Rachel, "Yes, he is going to be at Christmas Eve dinner." He's got nowhere else to go. Mom said, hey, you know, his parents aren't around. He's got nowhere else to go. We invited him over for dinner. She's like, I don't want him there. And she doesn't feel like she can out his secret. You know, you still care about somebody you've known your whole life, even if they did you wrong. So how do you handle this? That's our big question. Dominique, what would you do? Honestly, I wouldn't out him about the entire thing, but I would let my mom know, like, hey, we didn't end on the best terms. Yeah. Is it okay if he doesn't come? Just, I mean, because she's already invited him, but I mean, I would let my mom know, like, hey, we, we did not end on the best of terms. I wouldn't tell her exactly why he ended, but I would let her know that it, it wasn't on the best. Well, don't you it think she? Don't enough. you think mom has to assume that you didn't end on the best of terms because it's ended anyways? That's where my mind goes. Like, come on, mom, you know, have some cooth. Like, Mom's- just say my my daughter was dating this guy for four years, and I'm going to put her in this position. I, I, I unless you made it seem like the breakup wasn't that bad, and he's still a nice yeah, guy, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Maybe you're a good breaker upper. Yeah, maybe you because they do live like next door to each other. Maybe you. Or this guy's a really nice guy. He helps mom bring groceries in, you know, stuff like that. Maybe he mows the lawn for stuff like that. He's trying to cover up the fact that, you know, there's some unknown secrets out there. So, Dominique, JJ says cheating is like six of one. It's bad enough to find anybody in bed with your loved one. But don't you think you'd rather walk in on him with a guy than with a girl? Then I'd be like, oh, my God, you haven't been living your truth this whole time. And... At least he didn't replace me with another female. Or am I the only one that thinks that way? You may not be the only one. Yeah, I just, I'm with JJ. I think that catching him with anybody, especially after four years, like, I just was so like, it, one, you weren't living your truth. And two, in our bed, it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. you, yeah. you were cheating on me, right? Like, we were about to get married and... It, you are going to push this lie in your life. Hey, would it be worse if it was an ugly girl? Uh, <laughs> oh, it would have been ten times worse. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you're, bad about laughing about you're, that. You're All the right. best. Thanks, Dominique. I hope you have a great morning. Hello, Amber. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thoughts on this? What would you do if you were Rachel? Honestly, I wouldn't out him completely. Just like Dominique said, I 
went through that myself with my own mom. She invited all my ex-boyfriends to, <clears throat> or my kids' dads to all the holidays. And yeah. it just was awkward. Like, it just makes it for a really long day. You know, even with the kids, they don't want to stay long. They're not sure how to react. I don't know. Because your, do- kids, your kids' dads aren't making the snarky comments to her. They're making them under their breath to you. Yeah. But, you know, I think she's trying to be the hero for her grandkids and have yeah. everyone there. Yeah. So I see that. I see that. Yeah. 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 It's kind of hard because, you know, obviously you date your brother's best friend and you have kids, whatever. Yeah. And- <laughs> Just makes a long day. I love how you're just rolling through that like it's an everyday thing for I feel everybody. like often you say the phrase, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what I it do. is. Yeah. yeah. That's, well, yes, that's my life motto. Thanks for sharing with us, Amber. <laughs> Happy holidays. Have a great day. Yes. Thanks. You too. Radio Mariah Carey looked fabulous. She was the diva that we've known to love. And uh, she was performing at this beautiful event. She had a gown on and her team had to hop into action. She had a wardrobe malfunction. This part broke. It came untethered, I should say. <laughs> it was very, very close to being a full-on scandal, but we made it work. Um, but we got it back and, you know, it was just a freestyle moment. It is what it was. It's nothing great, but let me just say this. We made it. No shock value anymore with the wardrobe malfunction. What you know what I mean? Incredible though. So the dress starts to come undone. She has two team members for wardrobe, and then her hair person comes up and starts brushing her hair. <laughs> and then they don't waste any time. No. Then she had someone add some bronzer to her cheekbones. It was so phenomenal. It was what you hope to see when you take in a Mariah show. Reese Witherspoon, she's on an Apple TV Plus series. It's called The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston. It's so good, and I feel so bad that I don't have Apple TV Plus because I'd love to see it. But she was promoting it on GMA3 one day, and Amy Robach was kind of insinuating that drama was happening even back then. Do you guys like the show? Of course we do. Love Addicted. It. Yeah. yeah. You have no idea. The water cooler conversation. Really? <laughs> yes, they are. Does it, does it hit home a well, little We can bit? give you a few more plot lines. That girl naughty. Yeah, I think it's been going on for a while, and they just finally had a chance to tell their spouses of over a decade each. All right, so in a Twitter Q&A, Elon Musk, he spoke about removing Kanye West. His whole thing was, I'm not going to remove anybody. Everyone is here to say whatever they want to, but when he posted a swastika, he's like, nope, can't do it. Posting swastikas in, in what is obviously not a you know, good way. Uh, it's an assignment to violence. I, I personally wanted to punch uh, Ka- Kanye, so uh, that, would, that was definitely inciting me to violence. I like that he's just being honest about it. Yeah, but what? But where does it stop? You know, is it just Elon's feelings that have to be hurt and incited, uh, inciting certain feelings? That's why they have these him? terms of service. Like, if you're going to incite violence, or you're going to be, you know, you're going to cross the line with something. Yeah. Then I, I, and I don't. I say it's just once too. Just chuck him. Let him be, man. I don't think, yeah, he should be allowed anywhere. And he's doing permanent damage to his kids. And I but just it's think it's the inciting so sad. violence. It, it, listen, you have every right to do permanent damage to yourself and everything like that. But w- when you're trying to get people to become violent, yeah. then find another way. There's a ton of really backhanded bathroom wall websites that I'm sure you can go to. You don't need to be on the main ones. Blowing up their candles today. This is so sad. Aaron Carter would have been 35. Pop star Sarah Bareilles is 43. And Tio is 49. <laughs> These rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best Yeah, one of the greatest wide receivers of all time, Terrell Owens. T.O. is only 35 today. Yeah, he did a wife swap. Oh, really? He is so hot, and he's so, like, sweet and charismatic. He was stuck switching with the guy that laughs like this on uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Where he's, oh, Louis <laughs> Gold, Nick, yeah, that so guy. <laughs> that guy lives off the land. He milks goats all day. Hippie. He has his own little island. And they just live there. They don't have any doors. So T.O.'s like, where the hell am I? It's actually, it was a, a good switch. Was he able to milk and... He refused to. He wore like a beautiful suit the whole time. <laughs> he, he brought these three piece yes. suits and then just hiked up where the ankles were so he could go in the water. This guy's but... such a baller. Let's begin now. Let's get it. Welcome to the big show. Catch, how are you feeling today? Uh, good. How are you? Starting your day with a little uh, citrus, I see. I am. A little vitamin C. I read my horoscope and it said I was going to get sick today. 
Your horoscope said you were going to get sick, oh, oh. so you decided to eat a tangerine. Yeah, it just said, keep up with your vitamin C, so I'm going to do one of my vitamin C blast packs in a minute. going to finish my collagen. Oh, my God. I'm so healthy. I worked out again yesterday. Yeah? Yep, walked four miles, biked four miles. Hey, girl. So, eight miles of moving. And then I did some arms, but okay, so I get there right when school is let out and all the tweens get over there and they just sit there on the machines and look at their phones. So I gently rubbed one's back. Oh no. I said, are you almost done? He had been sitting on the leg machine for 35 minutes. 35. I watched half a Dr. Phil (laughs) and, uh, and just moved on. Liam swam. So that was good. Then I got home. Grilled some chicken drumsticks out in the cold, but it was a, a nice night. So, yeah, that was it. Oh, and then we watched Elf as a family. It was good. And that was it. Well, we drove down to Rogers, got Whoa. whooped, got home at 11. Yeah. Got to sleep at midnight. Why do you live that life? I... Your kids are old enough to go alone. You really have to watch everything. We had to bring someone else's kid, even. Oh. Like, that's the... Well, so... What happens is my my son is my other my oldest son is coaching that team, so he comes in from St. John's, grabs some food, drops off some laundry. We all get in the family truckster, yeah, head down to Rogers. All five of us mm. get whooped. Come back. Wow, this is the worst team any of my children have ever played on. Yeah, you athletically look really tired. I uh, it it's <laughs> it's emotionally draining to watch kids just not care anymore. So I told this story early yesterday, and um, it was when we opened the show, and I should have saved it till now to get your reaction, but I was talking to my sister on on Monday, and she was saying how my nephew is taking these piano lessons, but it's like so far away, and she's she said it's later on in the evening, and so she kind of um, just sharked one, not sharked, but um, what, what, like coaxed one of the... Yeah, she's just kind of hiring a private tutor for her son, right? Yeah, she just said, you know, do you give side lessons? And this guy's like, sure. And so she gave him her address, and he comes for the first lesson, and he walks in the door, and he says, I don't want to freak you out, but I got to tell you something. And she's like, what? And he goes, I lived here for 12 years. That's so crazy. He has the same name as my nephew's dad, and this woman... That is his mother was running for mayor of the town my sister lives in. Too many coincidences. It's just too many. And my sister found the census from 1932. There is a girl that lived four houses down with the exact same name as my sister. How weird is that? Right? (sighs) These These are crazy coincidences. I don't usually believe in like a lot of this crap. But that's really weird. There's too many coincidences here to not make it. I said, Emma, it's almost like your house is it. When you go to my sister's house, it feels alive. I don't want to. I don't want to be like. That's the termites. Weird about it. But there's something about it. It's like you're always being watched. It's a very old home. It was built a year before toilet paper was invented. And it was the old servants quarters for the mansion across the street. So, you know, those walls have stories. And uh, there was a ghost caught on camera. I showed you that video. It was uh, awfully freaky. So I'm like, I feel like the house called this guy. Because those are those are too many coincidences to happen to my sister. Right? I agree. It's too... I finally got you on board with something like that. I know you always like say phooey that. with but, stuff. But, I, mean, I don't believe this is the universe giving anyone a sign. I don't know what this is, but it is too many coincidences. But man, this is my life. I think about someone and I literally see them later on that day, if well, not that hour. That's common brain pattern. How, what? Because you like know what you're going to do in an hour. Somebody you know what I you're going to do in an hour and odds are pretty good. You've seen them there before or they're on the same path as you. Walmart? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't Listen, agree you, with you on if that. You, if you think of your third grade teacher today and then run into her at Walmart coincidence but if you think about somebody you work uh, at work and that you work in the same pattern and you see him at walmart or the grocery store that's not a coincidence that's just uh, but yeah it is like if i worked with somebody and i saw him at work that would be a duh that, that's not that, a coincidence that lowers your that lowers your amount of having a random interaction by so much now if it's somebody you haven't seen in 30 years 
and you don't live in the same city anymore, then yes, I believe that's a coincidence. So things happen to me all the time, and I've talked about it before. It just like it freaks me out, but it happens so often that I just kind of brush it off. But when she called, I'm like, that is a crazy coincidence. I like these stories. So let's do this. Do you have a really, really cool story you could tell us? And I got a couple of minutes to dedicate to this. If you want to call right now, what coincidence have you had that has really freaked you out? So your sister Emma will be able to teach, uh, tell this story for a long time. She'll be able to say, I hired a private tutor. He walked in. He said he lived here for 13 years. His mom was running for mayor of this city, yeah. and his name is the same name as my baby daddy. Crazy. Like, those are all really weird freak-out coincidences. What do you got for us? We were talking about Kat's sister, who had just an amazing run of coincidences. The old, old home that she's living in, she went to find a like a piano tutor for her son because she didn't want to drive him all the way across the other side of the city for late-night piano lessons. This guy shows up, says, I don't want to freak you out, but I lived here. For 13 years. For 12 years. Or whatever and, it was, yeah. And and it, it was just so weird. And the name, it's the same name as my nephew's dad. And there are just so many. The one that gets me, how does this not get you? Back in the 30s, two houses down was a woman that had my sister's exact name. Like exact name except for the middle name. How weird is that? And not even a relation. I thought it was crazy. Uh, Kim texted, the people that bought my house had a kid in my son's class And the husband's name is the exact same name as my husband. They don't have to change the name on the mailbox. That is a weird coincidence, Kim. Sarah just texted, I was working at a group home. When I first started, this lady had passed away. A month later, we got a new person to take care of. She had the same haircut and shoes. Oh, my God. That's kind of weird. This one from Brandy. My daughter's name is Layla. Her birthday is May 22nd. Last year, I found my birth father. My new cousin's daughter's name is Layla. Her birthday is May May 22nd. 22nd. Brandy, sit tight for this because my birthday, March 18th, 1985, March 18th, everything that has happened as like, um, like monumental moments for my mom's bloodline, like by her birth family that found her. People have been married on that day, died on that day, born on that day. Like, Tens of people. I believe there's a cosmic force making all this happen. When they found out that my birthday was March 18th, they looked like they saw a ghost. Well, right, because now they got to get another gift for somebody they really don't know. That's stupid. (laughs) Well, it is. It's just kind of a waste, right? Um, Another coincidence, which I never even told you about, when I was a camp counselor once, there was this little girl that I had known from when I worked as a manager at this group home, this children's group home in the inner city. I've had a lot. And uh, I looked at her like almost like a daughter, you know, she was uh, just kind of a rebellious, rambunctious girl. And I said, we're going to camp. Let's go. You love camp. So we go. And um, I remember we were out in the woods one day. There was a little girl that had the exact same face as this girl. They could have been twins. Yeah, little girls look alike. And but the thing was, you know, obviously the girl that I was taking care of wasn't on the right side of the tracks per se. Like she had dingy clothes and she was being raised oh. in an orphanage. That's where I worked. Sure. And so this girl lived in this mansion. Her dad was a tycoon, okay? And so they were living completely opposite lives, yet they had the same exact face. It was so weird. And so One was like, oh, okay, my dad's single. And then the other one was like, oh, I was single at the time. And so they tried to match us up at one point and we were going horseback riding. And I was starting to fall for this guy. His name was Steve Goot. And we were riding this horse and the horse was going so fast. And I was like, I thought it was going to, you know, pass out because of the motion. And you know, do that a lot. They pass out while they're running. And then I caught a limb to the face. It was awful. And so I go down, boom, like a sack of potatoes i'm on the ground and he comes and he picks me up like this prince and puts me on the horse well, hold that and, thought i don't want to cut your story oh, yeah. off hey good morning good morning is she telling the story about the parent trap no no why would you ever say this something like life. that oh this is cat's life i'm sorry but have a great morning continue please anyway so he picks me up and and it was just like this really romantic moment and i think right there i like kind of fell in love with him and so to have two oh, girls. Hold on, not to cut you off. Hey, yeah. good morning. What can we do for you? 
Hey, listen to your phone, not your radio, 15 seconds from right now. I'm telling a story. All right. I guess we don't know. Uh, uh, hey, good morning. How are you? Hello? Hi. Is she talking about the wedding planner? No, this is my this life. This is her life. Thank you, guys. You keep interrupting her. Go ahead, Kat. People are texting me uh, certain things. Anyway, so uh, at this one point, the girl that I was taking care of gets adopted by this terrible family that owned a junkyard. So I have to Are give her up. Swiss Family Robinson? No, this no. is my life. Oh, right. Uh, sorry. It's hey, like, real quick. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> is she talking? It takes two. I am. It oh takes two. Oh, my God. Two. That took forever. Oh. That was- that was actually one of the mo- more believable stories, but I had to do it because Kirstie Alley. We lost her this oh, week. That was Kirstie painful. Alley. Uh, it's a great movie. What's your I name? I love that. It is. Uh, Trina. Trina, congratulations. You know the rules when you hear Kat, the world's greatest liar, take a movie and try and make it into her own life. We reward you with tremendous swag, end of the year swag. Got to get rid of it before the new year swag from the Playhouse. So consider yourself blessed, Trina. <laughs> You didn't believe I hung out with Steve Gutenberg? (laughs) (laughs) We were maybe 10, 15 minutes into the show, and Kat had kind of made a comment, and I said, well, this is probably time to share with our audience what's been going on, just in case she misses some time, you know, moving forward. (laughs) You are so dramatic. And (laughs) But it does hurt. hurt. We all go through our silent battles. Cat Silent Battle is is something that I, I I don't know how to explain it other than the fact that sh- she's addicted to TikTok. I don't think that that's the case, but I think it does contribute to how I feel right now. I She believes she's getting carpal tunnel from holding her phone a certain way because she scrolls so long. Either that or arthritis <laughs> or something. My thumb is... Only if I do this and pull it out of its socket does it feel or give me some type of relief. So I know you're not supposed to Google, but this is a real thing. They call it smartphone finger. <laughs> they do. They call it texting thumb. I feel like beating you amongst the hand with a hammer. No, I don't think that would help. But somebody else has had to have had it. You know who they did a whole episode on this? Kim Kardashian. She had it. She had to have this other is your lame ass attempt. Her. To make yourself more of a Kardashian? Yes. No, it's not. I would I would get rid of this in a heartbeat. But now I'm trying with my left hand, it, and it feels odd. And that's odd. why your posts have been slow and from and the wrong angle and stuff I, like that. I don't know what the future holds, but I need some suggestions out there. She goes, it, do you think if I put a pop socket on, it wouldn't hurt as bad? I go, you just have to stay off your phone a little bit. It's the same as But I love else. how you say that, and you're on your phone literally I'm every two seconds. I'm not complaining. About my hands hurting but because you'll get I'm on to this my, point. I won't. I think you will. It, texting thumb. Somebody texted. It's also also called gamer's thumb. This is this sounds this serious. Is, I feel like it could, and it is inflamed. Look at like the joint. It's red. We once were a civilization of people who had to survive in caves. We found fire, therefore we were able to eat the red meat. And we would hunt our meat. We've devolved so bad that you're now suffering from Samsung phone thumb. I don't think I have text fine yet because I'm very good at holding my phone up. But we're getting there. We're going to look so different when they dig us up in like 100 years. To compare us to somebody 100 years from today, we're going to look weird. Anybody else having carpal tunnel because they use their phone too much. When she said this, I said, I can guarantee that we'll get 100 people to call the show that have suffered some kind of ailment from being on their phone too much. Allison says she had tech thumb last year, and she switched it up. She used her different hand, and it kind of healed itself. But the problem is Kat uses that hand so much that it's already very conditioned. (laughs) So what I want you to do is just holler at us real quick, if you could. How did you get past this heavy ailment that may affect the rest of your life. I would like to say a special good morning to Kayla, the thigh gap girl, who says uh, it sounds like Kat needs to get some therapy for her addiction uh, because it's a a legit addiction to the phone. 
and the TikTok world and other social media. Oh, my God. I, do you need, like, a sponsor for phone addictions? <laughs> I was just asking, like, they do for AA. Do you need somebody that you can lean on? Listen, stop talking would, like, right now because the phone out of your hand, maybe? he's making this up. I don't sit there on TikTok. It's just, like, daily use of my thumb. So this could be anything, like, doing the space bar, that hurts. Holding my mouse, that hurts. Jesus it's not, I don't, I'm not addicted to TikTok. Please don't think I'm addicted to social media. There are people with real jobs out there that struggle every day physically, and they come home in pain. You have phone thumb. You know what my friend Lisa, her mom, worked from home licking envelopes for a company, and... She didn't just wet a rag? No, she didn't. And so she well, would dumb. pay us, she would pay us $20 an hour to lick for her, and she Envelopes had to wear, for her. She had to wear a brace on her thumb because of too much like movement of her thumb on these envelopes. So I got paid with the way I lick. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, follow that up. Good luck with that. Have a great morning. Uh, but I, I do want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, did, you, did you ever have like a, a, a phone thumb or a phone finger or whatever they call it now? Not so much my, my thumb or fingers, but I'm literally sitting in the parking lot of the chiropractor right now for my neck Wait, because the I angle know. that I look at things, <laughs> as long as it, <laughs> does he know you're long, on the radio right now? As long now? as I do it for it. I tried explaining it to her. She doesn't, oh. she doesn't care. It's all right. Most people don't. I definitely recorrect, like correct myself. If I'm looking down at my phone, I bring it up like this Daddy, and will rest my know. arm. It's a 2022 problem. It's like where we're living right now. You got to worry about your spine. This is such a de-evolutionizing thing. I mean, we're it, it, literally, we're turning back into monkeys. You should watch out for it. Cause I watch how you text you literally, your whole head is down like that. Like your neck is touching your chest. When I see you do that, you're going to, you're going to hurt yourself. So good luck with your chiropractor. What, 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 what do they work on when they go into the chiropractor? Do you get like the decompression stuff going on? They crack your neck and they pull. I go in and out. Yeah, definitely my neck. And then just like the top part of my back just realigning everything. And it just cracks like crazy. But I'll start to get headaches. And then yeah. I know that I've been looking down at my phone too long. So you feel for Kat and her, her texting thumb here that she's I got hurt. going on, huh? I do, but Kat, if you haven't yet, like go see a, even a massage therapist or um, or a chiropractor because I mean, there's exercises and things that you can do to relieve it. <laughs> like yeah. little, she got little dumbbells that you can use, <laughs> like, Listen, a little, know, like, like a little treadmill you can put your finger on. <laughs> I get massages like it's my job, but yeah, I should go get some hand rubs. Ooh, that sounds lovely. They call that what? <laughs> All right, thanks, Jen. Have a great day at the chiropractor. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you being on the show. Like, I can't bring this up to Derek because he already calls me a lemon. Like, he says he married a lemon. Oh, you don't have a butthole. <laughs> I do have a butthole. You need to stop spreading that rumor. What's trending? What's trending? I don't even know how to follow that up, but let's get to what's trending this morning, Kat. What were we even talking about? Were we recording for another part of Minnesota and you were talking about kale? Do you remember, like, how passionate my hatred for kale was? Yeah, I do. So I just found a brother from another mother, uh, mother, mother, I guess, <laughs> United States Senator John Kennedy. He just hates kale. They hate Thomas Jefferson. They hate Dr. Zeus and they hate Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> These woke, high IQ stupid people, they walk around with Ziploc bags of kale that they can eat to give them energy. Now, if you want to eat kale, that's up to you. I don't eat kale. You know why? Because kale tastes to me like I'd rather be fat. Okay, so that needs to this get a is mug an somewhere. actual United States senator. This is somebody that makes decisions for people. Okay, and <sighs> if you're doing, not first, guys? you're last. And so Ooh, he that won't get fooled again. Hates kale as much as I do. I want to know. You'd rather be fat than eat this healthy food. You'd rather stay massive than eat this healthy food, which could better your life. What is it? Tofu. Tofu? Yeah. I can't get on the tofu I'd rather chew either. on some cardboard. Yeah. My brother went through a tofu phase. My brother has been a vegetarian for most of his life, my younger brother. Yeah, I used to like him. he would get the tofu option at Chipotle, and I'm like, what a waste. Why are you even out to dinner with us? You know, it was just, it didn't, it just seemed like eating air. So I want to know, what would you rather 
um, be fat over eating as a healthy food. All right. So maybe it's cauliflower. In my case, it's kale. Uh, I would rather stay fluffy than eat that. So go ahead and text it because that's what's trending. I want to talk rejections today, not to make you feel bad, but I came across this list, Kat, of stars who were rejected by American Idol. Let me break down some of the big time superstars that were told no by American okay. Idol. Kane Brown. Really? He but, got on, he got onto the X Factor, but they said we don't need another Scotty McCreary. They chucked him from American Idol. Really? Naya because Ra- of the low voice, the country feel. Naya Rivera did not make it through from Glee on American Idol. Okay. Chrissy Metz from This Is Us. Really? Yeah, she got chucked from American Idol. Okay. Hillary Scott from Lady A. She tried out twice. No way. Never got the audition. She was a guest judge. What a fun full circle moment for that girl. Colby Calais. Really? She had a number one top 40 hit for four weeks. She had my wedding song. Bubbly? Uh, no, it was the one. Um, the one that you remember so well from your wedding. Yeah. That one. She admits she wasn't ready when she auditioned, but they could not see her talent. And probably the biggest name that got chucked from American Idol and never made it. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. Bibi Rexa? Bibi Rexa. No way. Waited in line for 10 hours. Ten years later, she was mentoring contestants on American Idol. God, her body is sick. I didn't notice, ever. <laughs> it's your screen. Good morning, favorite. Trish. Uh, so what I thought we could turn this into is you've been rejected and your biggest rejection in life probably has a happy ending, right? That, that, therefore, we come up with the saying yeah. of it was meant to be or uh, you don't learn from your pain and stuff like that. So hang on to yours. I want to get yours because I know there's uh, we got to get we got to narrow it down. Kat came in with one of those biblical scrolls this morning of things she's been rejected from. I actually have only been rejected from anything that I ever wanted once. You spoiled brat. I remember the moment like it was yesterday. I'm getting the feelings right now. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I still talk to this person. But I remember. I remember. So that would be easily the biggest rejection in your life. Yeah. I want to give a special shout out to Dr. Brunswick who texted in first time texter. He said, I heard you guys randomly talking about this. I got rejected from the first four medical schools I applied to ended up teaching back at the number one school that I wanted to go to. Those who can't do teach. So uh, we're talking about rejection today because I came across this list of all of these amazing musical artists or actors and actresses, people that are in Hollywood now. That were rejected by American Idol, like Chrissy Metz from This Is Us got rejected from American Idol. Uh, Colby Calais got rejected from American Idol. Kane Brown yeah. got rejected from American Idol. Probably the top name, though, B.B. Rexa. Waited in line for 10 hours. The producers gave her three seconds, turned her away. Some people don't perform well under pressure. Those people had to hone their craft. Chrissy Metz, I get. I think she's a better actress than she's she is. She's an amazing singer, though. A singer. Yeah, I guess. But we want to talk about your biggest rejection. So, I mean, I could I could fill the rest of the show today yeah. with love life rejection. I bet I then... know the biggest rejection for you. Go ahead. The twins. Yeah. That one's got a sting. It only stings when you bring it up every day. Yeah. I mean, that was a long, long time ago. But it feels like just yesterday the when other, I bring it up. The other thing is uh, <laughs> my parents had uh, the, the, the day that uh, I got cut, uh, they were they were taking pictures for one of the local the newspapers in the Twin Cities and has me backhanding a ball in the third baseline, turning yeah. it and throwing a rocket. And it had my name and everything in it and stuff. And uh, my parents, because they were uh, really great about rubbing that kind of stuff in, had it actually framed and plaqued for me. I know. And it sits <laughs> in my basement. So every time I go down to grab a beer or to play pool or just to enjoy some time in our man cave. But even uh, if you didn't I'm make re- it. Reminded I, by us. The joy of of Reagan telling her friends, yeah, that's my dad. Because I, I saw her. She was actually proud. Yeah. They were like, your dad tried out for the twins. And then, uh, and yeah. then yeah, and then they're like, and then you live here? Like, <laughs> you could have you could have been a multimillionaire. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's easily my biggest rejection. I'd like to hear about yours, though, because after you make me feel bad, I'd like to even the odds here. Mine, I was so young, I didn't handle my emotions correctly, I don't think, when you get... Rejected from a job, but you know Wes, right? Yeah. 
So he and I were working in the same building. He was kind of like mentoring me. I was like his intern. and You were just starting in radio, right? Yeah. And so I was 18, just turning 19. And I was sad that he was leaving. He was going to another market in Milwaukee. And I was like, listen, when you get there, he's like, we're going to need a girl. We're going to need a female presence on the show. I'm like, oh, my God, I got this. I got this. All he does is compliment me. All I got this. sewn up. He gets there. Management evidently wants to hire an older person. Okay. Now, do you believe that, number one? Yes, because she was older. Okay. And now, looking back, it makes sense. You know, an 18-year-old super green doesn't always bode well with management because you don't have life experience to talk about on the radio. I get it. That's tough, like yeah. I, I could fit an interim position with their show for sure, sure. Like a street girl. But I remember him calling me and I was working midnight to five on a radio station and he goes, Hey, I hate to tell you this, but we have to hire somebody else. And I just started bawling. Oh. I had already cashed my checks, my first check there. You were looking for apartments and everything? Well, I was just like, yes, you dream big, you know, and why not? It's okay to dream big and put that out there to the universe, but I remember crying, and he's like, please don't cry, please don't cry, and I'm just like, you didn't stick up for me, (laughs) and uh, now we're still friends to this day and and text and stuff, but I don't know. I just remember that's the only thing I've ever been rejected from. And it hurts so badly because you want it so badly. Think about your life. You wouldn't have met your husband. You wouldn't I have a kid. Know. Your butthole I would probably know. still be intact. I don't think that would be the case. You think you'd still have a butthole if you'd have taken the job in Milwaukee? No, I, I think I would not have. Oh, you think it's so the, you think you, I still you, would have you, had a butthole? Well, right. I think there's probably certain stresses in your life that kind of led to that. Uh, no, I thing. think it was just you it was bound to medical? happen. Mm hmm. So no matter what, your butthole is going to fall out. But the thing is, would I have met somebody that would have taken care of me as well as Derek did? No. I look at all my past boyfriends, and I'm like, none of them could have handled that pressure. Like, Derek was a rock star. Yeah. They narrowly escaped. (laughs) Yeah, good for those guys. The Playhouse podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.